bearings are properly lubricated with a quality grade of pressure grease. For pellet mills operating in extreme seasonal ambient temperatures, the type of grease used should take into account the seasonal temperature changes. The pellet mill should be lubricated at regular intervals depending on the location of the bearing. Remember, bearings should be lubricated after every 100 hours of operation. One or two pumps on a standard hand pump grease gun is sufficient. High pressure air operated grease guns are not recommended. The die should be visually inspected prior to each startup and after shutdown. Inspection entails visual appraisal of the die, ensuring no foreign objects are lodged in die borings, and you should check for excessive wear. Each die has a longevity of 1,200 hours under normal running conditions. Each side is expected to run approximately 600 hours before being removed and flipped to run on the opposite side. Anytime the die is removed, inspected, or flipped, the bolts holding the die in place should be tightened and fastened with high strength Loctite. Anytime the machine is running, the bolts should be inspected to ensure that they are tightened and properly in place. The roller should be visually inspected prior to each startup and after shutdown. Inspection entails visual appraisal of each roller, ensuring no foreign objects are impeding the free rolling motion of the rollers, and you should check for any excessive wear. Roller longevity is expected to be 1,500 hours. Note, the roller frame is attached to the main shaft with a drive bolt. The drive bolt is secured with a nylock nut. The drive bolt is actually designed to be loose and should not be further tightened. Tightening this bolt will not allow for proper roller adjustment and will severely impede the ability to create pellets. Most organic materials pelletize when the moisture content is between 10 and 15 percent. Moisture aids in the densification process where it is a means to transfer heat from the dye to the material. The lignin within the organic matter melts and acts like a glue that holds the material in its pelletized form. Without proper moisture, heat isn't transferred properly and the material won't be hot enough to create a good pellet. The pellet will crumble. With too much moisture, the dye never gets hot enough to create a pellet and the material coming out will crumble as well. Prior to pelletizing your material, the incoming material must first be reduced in size. Various machines may be used as size reduction tools. Some of these include hammer mills, shredders, and chippers. The size of the material may vary depending upon incoming feedstock. Follow these guidelines for incoming material sizes. Cellulosic materials such as cardboard and paper, three-quarter to one inch. Biomass materials including crop residue and grasses should be less than a quarter inch in size. Woody materials such as sawdust or chips need to be less than a quarter inch. Special care should be taken not to shred paper material into lightweight fluffy material since it will not flow and moisture levels will make it tricky to pelletize. The dye inside the pellet mill needs to be between 165 and 200 degrees Fahrenheit to properly make a pellet. Of course, the temperature necessary to make a pellet will vary depending on the material you're pelletizing. A list of materials and the proper dye temperature needed is available by referring to your owner's manual in Section 3. In order to obtain the proper temperature, the mill needs to be warmed up. To do this, follow the following procedure. One. Input material must be ideal for pellet production. It must have proper moisture content and lignin content. Two, place a bucket or catch-all of some kind under the discharge of the pellet mill. The material collected will be rerun through the mill to aid in warming the mill. Three, turn the pellet mill's power on. Four, slowly introduce organic material to be pelletized into the input funnel being careful not to overflow the chamber. Five, after a few minutes, the mill will begin to expel ground material or a poorly formed pellet. Continue to add material to the mill input chamber, being careful not to overflow the chamber. Six, as the dye begins to warm, you will observe water vapor exiting the top of the input funnel. This is an indication that the dye is beginning to warm up. Seven, 
Once you begin to see vapor, take the material collected at the discharge and reintroduce the material into the input funnel. Eight, the dye will prove to be warm enough to produce pellets when pellets being discharged are durable and compressed. At this point, the pellet may not be hard, but as it cools, it will harden. The dye is now ready for continued pellet production. The dye in your pellet mill was shipped to you in a preconditioned state. That means no material has been run through the dye. Conditioning pellets have been provided with your pellet mill. These conditioning pellets are made up of 50% sandblast media, 25% straw, and 25% soybeans, corn, canola, or other oily product. The following procedure needs to be followed to condition your dye for the production of pellets. This applies to replacement dyes as well. First, place a receiving bucket at the mill discharge. Second, power up the pellet mill. Third, pour pellet conditioning material into the mill input chamber through the funnel at a gradual rate, being careful not to overflow the chamber. Fourth, Material will begin to flow through the die. As the material flows through, it will begin to take the scale out of the die cavities through